Assalamu alaikum, my name is Dudu. It takes a lot of dedication to be a mom and at the same time a successful businesswoman. Women are impeccable beings as they are able to be both. Today we'll be talking to Batul who will be taking us through the journey of mom entrepreneur. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. I'm sitting here with Batu. She is a fitness and fashion influencer on social media. Assalamu alaikum, Batu. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you for having us um, at your lovely home. I'm so excited to actually finally sit down with you and actually cover your whole life. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's so, so nice to see you. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, you are a fashion Easter and also a fitness um, a conductor and you have an amazing follower uh, follow on social media, especially your Instagram. So please tell us a bit more about Pitu, where you come from and what is your journey into this lifestyle? Thank you so much for that. And um, so I come from Turkey, as you know, and um, the reason why I started my journey was because after having my kids, I felt like um, I don't have purpose and aim in life besides just taking care of my kids and bringing them up because my whole life I've been like studying and, you know, always had an aim and goal, like, you know, doing something in my life. like. It was like exam time, like, you know, trying to get a distinction for an exam or something like this. So after having kids, it's like it's almost like I had no goals anymore <laughs> besides just bringing up good kids. But obviously, like um, bringing up babies can really drain you and take a lot of your um, time. And, you know, you can feel so exhausted and feel so overwhelmed with so many different changes in your life. And you also become insecure in a way about yourself and you're not good enough, you're not good mother and you're just like a mother and like a cook at home and nothing else, <laughs> yeah. so, you know. It feels a bit like like there's no, um, I don't know, like you feel like you you don't have much purpose, help, yeah, much purpose to yeah. do. So anyhow, um, I just said, you know what, let me just do something, start something of my own that I love doing, which is my fitness. And then I just started my journey of fitness and I said, I, I really want to help other ladies out there like who are feeling the same way I do and um, help them out because I'm sure they all feel the same way like how I did. And so many ladies out there, they feel insecure about their weights after giving birth. So it's always nice to have that sort of a support, positive support system around you and it's very difficult to get that from other ladies out there there's so many other people who like to bring you down and make ugly comments because mm -hmm. they either jealous of you or something and they just bring you down you're like they so hard to find ladies who lift you up so then i just said oh i really want to help other ladies out there and i really want to help them to um to make them confident in, the, in themselves and I want them to be healthy and have a good lifestyle and yeah and that's also like how I moved yeah. on to bringing in like a fashion clothes and designing modest wear to make them feel confident and good mm -hmm. first I want to make them feel good about their physiques and about themselves and they, they have um, so much worth self-worth and I want them to look good in this modest fashion way which you have done an incredible job we can Thank see you your so followers much. and everybody coming up to you and saying we love your products <laughs> we love your work Thank you so much. and tell us more about your transition from Turkey and now into South Africa how has it been for you as a student as someone that's living here and also again as a businesswoman running a business here um, so coming from Turkey, actually, we didn't come straight to South Africa. We went to um, Sudan. We lived in Sudan for five years. And I've, I've met a lot of nice people in Sudan. I think they are the most humble, kind people that you can ever find. Like, they are, they are really nice people. So it made me feel like I'm home there. And I made so many good friends. And then when we moved here, it was a bit difficult. But then I adjusted. And when I started school here, obviously, um, there was different groups like, you know, Indians, whites, blacks, they were all separated, they don't really mix. And I felt like I don't know where I should fit myself in. So I was just in all the groups, I would chill with everyone. Mm -hmm. And often like, um, they did make me feel like um, the people here, they did make me feel like an outsider, like I don't fit in, I don't mm -hmm. belong. 
but it really like didn't bother me. I just did what I had to do, and I focused on what I wanted to focus as being successful in my studies and achieving the best results possible. Because um, you see, when you move countries and languages becomes like too much, and mm -hmm. and I remember in English I got like really low mark, and that really made me so upset and. Ever since then, I started just pushing myself and focusing on my studies so much that I want to tell myself, you know what, this is something that's going to make me come out stronger from this and make me, like, you know, a better person. And I'm going to, like, do much better in my studies and stuff. So I focused more on my studies and everything. And then eventually I seen just people started to like me and talk to me and make me feel mm. welcomed. And yeah, so it's all about how you handle the situation and how you come out of the situation. So you make yourself fit in whatever circle uh, of friends, circle of friends or family yeah. or in-laws you are in. You just make, you make yourself fit in and you do what you, who you, like you do the best of you and, and you just be you like nothing else. And you don't need to please nobody. You just need Definitely. to be yourself <laughs> and just be yeah. uh, true to your creator and do whatever you doing is just to please your creator and no one else yeah, and great. then you see everything falls into place <laughs> yeah that's very nice um what's this advice that you gave that be yourself and be true to yourself yeah. and also still remain truthful to your creator and that's just embrace it the, the embrace yourself the best way you can that's so it. um tell us more about your passion for fitness what thrives you? What makes you wake up every morning and say, this is what I love to do and this is what I'm going to share with the rest of the people? You see, fitness is something that you cannot, um, you cannot put into words. You have to experience the feeling. Mm -hmm. Fitness makes you so strong mentally and physically that like, you feel another person. Like, especially after having such a long day or laugh, like a rough work day, when you go and just just have a session of workout, you your whole mindset changes. You become like stronger, more powerful, more positive, more energetic. Like your whole world, your whole universe changes. The mm -hmm. way you think changes, you know. And when the way you thinking changes, your thought. When your thought changes, then your surroundings, your happiness, your mood, everything changes. You become you spread positivity and happiness. So the feeling of it is something that I really like other people to like, you know, experience it. And I always encourage my clients to do that because especially after having kids, you tend to, you can easily get into postnatal depression. Mm -hmm. And I think just being fit and healthy makes you feel so good. And you need that me time, you know? And I think for me, training is like me time. It's like, firstly, I take care of myself, not because I want to lose weight, but because I want to feel good inside and out, you know? Yeah. Once your aim becomes this, then everything becomes different, even in terms of your work. You push yourself through your work, you know? Uh, like you're mentally so strong that you just believe yeah. that you can achieve anything, whatever you put in your mind. If you focus on your goals and what you want to achieve, um, just you just work towards that and you just you just achieve it. That's that's how training makes you like uh, you know makes you feel. So, what is your favorite favorite? Um, what's this um, uh, exercise that makes you feel like you're on the top on top of the world? <laughs> I think training makes. <laughs> Why though? <laughs> it's just like, I don't know, it's something else. Or even like doing like pull-ups or something. Because you feel like, wow, you're getting somewhere, you're achieving something. Yeah, right. Because it's so hard, like, you know, just to do one pull-up. But the more you practice, the better you get. And yeah. the better you get, the better you feel. I My favorite workout, I think, is just being able to walk. Yeah. Like just being able to just get even to... Even just win. going for a run yeah. or just walk outside makes you feel, makes you feel good. Like you, yeah. you feel like you are freshened up and yeah. <laughs> you feel all like positive you know so um you have an amazing clothing line that you have that you actually like i see a lot of pictures on instagram i'm like wow this is so amazing like i wish i could just always wear that on a day-to-day -day basis so how did you transition from now okay i'm i'm a fitness conductor and now i'm thinking of actually i want to 
create, uh, I want to have a clothing line that actually accommodates a modest dressing. How did you go from that transition? Because I always find it difficult to find Islamic clothing in South Africa. Yeah. So you go to Santon City and what do you find there for like that suits Muslim ladies? Like either the top is short or mm -hmm. like I really like something and it's just too tight or like the sleeves are short. So it's just, it wasn't accommodating. So I said, why not do something that's good quality and that's suitable for modest wear and, you know, make people feel good in this modest outfits and encourage people to wear modest clothes. So I just said, um, I will do what I feel like it's lacking here mm -hmm. and what like you know everything that I'm doing I just think of what do we need the most we need ladies to encourage Muslims to go out there and to train because training is not only for people who don't wear hijab it's mm -hmm. for everyone so and encourage them to feel good about themselves in their physiques and in mother dressing. so it's something that just like I really wanted to do you know and I just said I'll just bring the best clothing, the best uh, fabrics from Turkey, and and yeah, and it's like my main thing was for to accommodate the Muslim ladies. Oh, that's that's Masha Allah. That is an amazing thing, and the fact that she mentions the whole modesty, really, honestly speaking, being in South Africa, finding modest clothes is really difficult. Yeah. And one of the things that you mentioned, which is basically the whole um, definition of being an entrepreneur, somebody that sees a gap in the market and also now tries to um, what's this fill that gap? And you saw a gap in the whole clothing and now you want to get in modest clothing from Turkey to South Africa, which mashallah is an amazing, it's amazing and I love your clothes. And you are a vibrant, young, beautiful, I must say. Oh, thank <laughs> you, just like you. <laughs> thank you, just a beautiful businesswoman. And you're also a mother and a wife. Thank you so much. How do you do all of that? How do you, how is that mom entrepreneurship going with you? <laughs> Don't even ask about that. That's a challenge every day I think every woman faces. Yeah. I think being a mom on its own is like a full-time business, full-time job. Yeah. And, you know, it's not just like you take care of your kids and your husband, but also like everything, like the cooking. And mm. But alhamdulillah, I have help with my lady at home. She helps me with so many things. My husband helps me also. And somehow Allah just helps me out, makes me a strong person. Whenever I, I actually do anything, I ask Allah, just Allah, please make me strong that I'm not in need for anyone. So just make me strong and I must just achieve what I want to achieve without needing someone else's help. And then I always make dua for this because it's really difficult to juggle everything by yourself. And um, you just need to uh, plan well, like your ma manage your times well, have a timeline for everything. So if it's going in the kitchen and baking all the stuff that I bake, the healthy stuff, um, I just have a timeline. So I say from this time to that time I will do this. And then this time to this time I will take care of my kids and give them some love and time. And then from this time to this time when my husband comes home, I will take care of him and give him all the attention in the world that he needs. <laughs> yeah. The whole thing is to be consistent, positive, and determined, and hard worker. If you don't work hard, then you will not get to your goals. So you have to work hard. So that is a tip for young ladies just like myself. Dedication, commitment, and having a flexible time to actually balance everything out. And so I just wanted to talk about the fact that you mentioned you are your main focus is actually fitness. Yeah. Right. So you also um you also have products that you produce yourself and also have um what's this uh, a fitness program that you have for ladies, um, what to eat, what not to eat, all these things. Yeah. And how has it been running that main business of yours during this time of lockdown? Because ev almost everything is shut off. Yeah, that's so true. You yeah. know what? I can tell you one thing. As much as I helped my clients, they helped me so much also. Mm -hmm. It's like it's become, we become family and friends. We support one another. Alhamdulillah, there's so many clients that have been like seeing so many good results with my plans and even my products. I try to put my best version out there for everyone and I try to accommodate everyone out there like with healthy eating and training and everything i try my best so do you always like especially now during lockdown you know um um mental health is one of the most biggest it's a biggest 
biggest crisis right now, considering the fact that people are falling under depression, anxiety, and everything. Do you ever actually get messages from your clients who say that, I feel like this, what am I supposed to do? And what do you suggest for me? Do you get that type of um, response from your... Yeah, I got a lot of responses, like someone in my family passed away, or um, I just had the coronavirus, or I feel demotivated, lockdown is making me eat so much, and I've picked mm -hmm. up so much weight. So, but so many of them come out like really strong out of it. They start focusing more on their workouts. They start being more positive. And even they encourage me to do what I'm doing. So all these new stuff that I launched, it's because of my clients. They really pushed me to do better. Just like how I push them, they push me also. So it works both ways. It's like we become so good with one another. It's like we, be, we have become a family. And sometimes it, it can be too much for me like to message every single one of them. So I just have a group and then I keep posting in the group and whoever messages me like um, I know they are like close to me and I know like we have another sort of bond together and I know those are the people who actually follow my plans. So it's like I keep those key people closer to me, you know, like I will always check up on those people who check up on me. Yeah. So it's like then I know who's actually committed and who's good. So my last question, I want to just for you to give our viewers advice on, you know, if you are a woman and you you just home and you don't know what to do, or you actually just started a business but you don't you feel more to I mean demotivated and you don't know what to do, you just like a bit lost. What type of advice would you give to that type of girl or woman? You know what, girls, it's okay to feel low. It's okay to feel down and demotivated. It's all about how you handle it. You have to come back to yourself and pull yourself together and say, you know what, enough is enough. I need to reach to my goal no matter what, whatever your goal is. Just say, I will work towards this no matter what and I will get there. Just put this in your head and believe in yourself. No matter what negative, like all the negativities around you, what, no matter what it is that's putting, pulling you back from doing it, leave all that aside and just pull yourself together and believe in yourself and just say, I can do this with the help of my creator. Okay. And I promise you, if your intention is clean and if you make a sincere dua to your creator, then everything will fall into its place. You just have your faith and your belief in yourself. SubhanAllah. That's all you need. <laughs> I've had an amazing time talking to you. I've always, I'm always inspired every time I'm with you. This is not the first time we're Trust together. Me, I am more inspired I, by you. I love you. And yes, our viewers, that, uh, this is Batu. This is the amazing woman that you see, you guys, on your Instagram and everything like that. <laughs> this is her. So it was so nice talking to her. And assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. <laughs>